the way we're going to break this out is uh, during the first hour, or the first 15 minutes, I'm going to give you an overview of Oracle 12C. And the remainder of the first hour, I'm going to uh, tell you about Oracle 12C database new features. We're going to take a short break and uh, then we're going to go to the second hour and I will go through more features on the Oracle side uh, again. And each time I will give you guys uh, time to ask questions and uh, I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, so Oracle, Oracle is very different from the uh, Microsoft universe. For those of you that work with the Microsoft infrastructure, uh, perhaps um, will recognize that the way to do things in Oracle is, uh, is drastically different. Oracle is really a, uh, a database server, right? It is really not meant, well, it is really not meant for the purposes of, uh, uh, of uh, like an operating system. In the Windows universe, you have the Windows OS, right? And then on top of that, you have SQL Server running, right? In the Oracle universe, things are a little bit different. Okay? So Oracle, Oracle has uh, an operating system that they have purchased. It's called Solaris. It's uh, Unix-based. But Oracle can run on Windows, Linux, really mainframes. Don't really know who uses mainframes anymore. And of course, Unix boxes and such. Oracle is really a truly portable, I say that in the loosest terms, portable database server. It can really go anywhere. SQL Server, on the other hand, is really not that way. It runs on the Windows uh, platform only. That can be plus or minus, right? It depends on what your infrastructure is like and what you're brought into. A lot of the large implementations a lot of the large Oracle implementations are sitting in the Linux Unix universe. Today, more and more Oracle is coming up in the Windows platform. As a matter of fact, for my sample, for my sample database, my own sample database installation, I have used uh, I have used Windows Server 2012, and I have installed Oracle. 12C on it, okay? and I'm using uh, I'm using Oracle's VirtualBox, Oracle's VirtualBox virtualization desktop virtualization platform, and on the VirtualBox I've installed Server 2012, uh, and I have installed Oracle. Let me show you. Let me log in. Here you go. Um, and what I want to do is uh, I've got quite a few things that I need to show you. I've got so many things I want to show you. Uh, I don't really know where to begin. I am so very excited about all of the additions and enhancements that have been made in the Oracle universe. For those of you that are uh, network administrators today, will really appreciate all of the changes that have been made uh, on the Oracle side. Let me share a few things with you in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, locations and such. Now, Oracle uh, Oracle has its own data structure that where it stores the database engine. Now, I've got let me edit this particular screen so that you can see it better. Right now, it looks crappy at best. Uh, they're bigger. And I'm going to change the color so that you guys can see a lot better. There we go. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so right now, on my box, um, I've got, as you can see, a bunch of environment vars. None of them here 
have the Oracle path listed. Oracle utilizes some of its own environment variables uh, to uh, to communicate um, to communicate various components. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you uh, the uh, here is the directory structure inside of app administrator, which is who I'm logged in as, Aura data, ORCL. This is where the system temp undo and redo and control files are located for the Oracle structure as they get installed by default. It's very different from the way things used to be. Uh, they, uh, the data inside of Oracle didn't used to sit in the app directory. Okay, so that's changed. If I go to uh, product 12.1, which is also Oracle, and go to DB Home, I will see the directory structure where Oracle got installed by default. Now, Oracle is, uh, as I said, uh, very different from the Microsoft Universe. It has to be portable. It has to have a way to, uh, to move around from environment to environment. And the installation setup process, configuration process, the uh, file structure it is really stored in similar locations no matter where you are, um, no matter what operating system you're using in Oracle. Now, of course, in the Linux universe, you're not going to have a app, you know, an app directory off of the root, but it does have a directory structure where inside of the Aura data directory structure under Oracle Home or Aura Home, it stores the default uh, database files. One of the other things that have uh, many database admins from the uh, Microsoft Universe confused is a difference between Oracle Database, Oracle Database, and Oracle Instance. Okay. One Oracle Database can have many instances. Oracle has something called an Instance ID. All right. An example of the Instance ID that I have created by default when I install Oracle by default and don't change anything. Um, it creates a default instance uh, called ORCL. So there's one database, many instances, and each instance has its own set of files. If I go inside of the directory structure, here we are, and I look at Aura data, you see ORCL is the instance that Oracle has used to install. One other thing that I want to share with you here is during my installation, during my installation right here, uh, this is the screenshot that I got when I installed Oracle. And I'm going to make this thing a little bit bigger. When the installation has been completed, this is the screenshot that you get. It tells you that the global database name is ORCL. That's what it is by default. It tells you that the database default database create uh, database has been created, and you can go to the DBCA ORCL directory and check the log files to determine um, what the installation process was. Global database name of ORCL and default SID or system identifier, my instance, ORCL was also installed. Then there's something called the server parameter file. And without the server parameter file, this SP file ORCL aura, without that file, the database would not start. Those are all of the parameters associated with the database engine the size and the memory locations, where it's all sitting, um, a whole host of other parameters, memory optimizations, disk optimizations, network optimizations, and so on. It also says 
that the Enterprise Manager EM Database Express URL is this HTTPS localhost 5500 and EM so I can go and log on to uh, Enterprise Manager which is the uh, web-based management component of Oracle and manage my database structure that way. There's something else I want to tell you. In the Oracle universe, okay, in the Oracle universe, most Oracle administrators, okay, most Oracle administrators, most Oracle administrators do not uh, use the enterprise manager the graphical interface to get a lot of the tasks accomplished. Most Oracle admins utilize the command line interface, which is how I do things. And I have been doing things that way for quite some time. I also want to show you, I also want to show you the other screenshot that I got when Oracle was done installing. This shot right here that said the installation has been successful. And if you want to see Installation, like if you want to see the components selected for installation, you can go to this directory right here, uh, product and DB1 home, and uh, you'll be able to see uh, what you chose to install Oracle with. Okay. So um, now what I want to do is I want to get right into, uh, I want to get right into uh, showing you the Oracle uh, DB structure. Now let me uh, share with you what this is. SQL Plus is a command line tool. No kidding. Sys is the user I'm logging in as. I'm logging in uh, Sys user with Sys DBA privileges. If I don't log on Sys user as Sys DBA privileges, it will not let me in. SQL Plus is a way that you can accomplish many tasks with an Oracle at the command line. You can create users, you can create table structures, you can create and manage Oracle database, you name it. One other thing for those of you that are really not database people, database language is split up into three primary categories. Right? There's DDL, which is data definition language. Okay. This is where you create tables and create indexes and create databases and create and drop things. DML is your SQL structure, which is uh, known as data manipulation, manipulation language. Okay, language. That is uh, SQL and PLSQL. Now, Oracle has something called procedural language structured query language. This is Oracle's extension to the base SQL standard. If you don't know PLSQL and you are trying to be an Oracle database administrator, you're not going to go very far in the Microsoft universe. PLSQL's equivalent, or counterpart, if you will, is TSQL, or Transact SQL. And it would be very difficult, if not impossible, for you to be a Microsoft database admin, Microsoft SQL Server database admin, without knowing Transact SQL. Data control language, data control language, allows you to start and shut down databases. Okay, so data control language, so DCL, DML, and DDL. Okay? So depending on who you are, you will have access to, well, performing all of these tasks. Obviously, you can understand that DDL commands, which allow you to create and drop things, drop is a way of saying delete, uh, DDL commands are much more, require much more security, correct? Because you don't want everybody to be able to create things on the fly. That would be uh, kind of, uh, well, no good. Uh, create or drop things. DML, data manipulation language in Oracle, you are able to assign very, very specific permissions to users to be able to perform tasks or not perform tasks. 
allow them access to certain tables and databases and not give them access to certain rows and certain columns and such. Same thing with data control language or DCL. Very few people have the ability to start up and shut down and back up and restore the database structure. Everybody can't do that, obviously. All right. So I logged on uh, to SQL Plus as Sys and with SysDBA privileges. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to show you a few things inside of uh, inside of uh, Oracle. Uh, that have changed inside of Oracle 12C that have changed since the uh, that have changed since the uh, um, uh, since the 11G and previous releases. Now Oracle has something called a sequence. I'm going to do create sequence, and creating a sequence is really nothing more than being able to. Uh, then being able to uh, use, uh, create a numbering scheme that uh, simply uh, increments a number sequentially. Okay, so I just created a sequence called S, and I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do create table T, and I'm going to create a column called X and that's going to be of integer data type, and I'm going to say the default value in this column will be the next value from the sequence. You couldn't do this inside of previous releases of Oracle. Okay. You're able to put in the next value associated with the sequence right here. Okay. You couldn't do that before. You had to create a trigger to accomplish that task. And then I'm just going to do like Y, which is going to be another column. It's going to be a varchar2 of 30 characters. Right. So there is my table T. I'm going to do insert into table T, X comma Y, right? And then I'm going to do values, and I'm going to do enter in default value here, and I'm going to say hello for Y. Okay, so rows created, and then I'm going to do select star from T. And there is my uh, X with a value of 1. So what happened here? I created a sequence. And sequence is just a numbering system. It sequentially starts from number one and increments two, three, four, five, and so on. Then I created a table here called T, and I created a column called X, and the default value in the X column is going to be the next value from the sequence. And X is going to be a primary key. Okay. And then I made a second column called Y, which is going to be a varchar data type, varchar2 data type, with 30 characters. And it created the table for me. Then I'm going to insert into table T, columns X and Y. And the values that I want to insert is going to be the default value in the X column. The default value in the X column is what? The next value of uh, the sequence. So that's why I get the number one, because I created the sequence right here, and I did not, um, I did not specify, uh, you know, what I want to start the sequence with. Now, sequence has been around for quite some time. What's new with 12C is the ability to do this right here. That used to require a separate trigger. Okay, so that's one little thing. I want to show you. Uh, want to show you something else. Um, I can, uh, what I can do is I can show you. The next thing that I want to show you is going to be a new column identifier called identity. In SQL Server, there is a column called an identity column. An identity column automatically creates a unique identifier for uh, the column name, not column name, for the column data. Let me show, let me show you. I'm going to do drop table T. I don't want it there. Bye-bye. And I'm going to do drop sequence S. Okay, remove those. 
So I'm going to do create, create table T, and I'm going to do X is going to be an integer, and it's going to be a generated as identity, all right, and it will be a primary key. And Y will be a varchar 2 with 30 characters, all right. Now, this is also something that you weren't able to do before. This is also specific to 12C, all right? So that is the X column name. T is my table name. And I am creating, I'm generating the integer. X column is a data type integer. And I'm generating this, it's generated. And it's generated as identity, which is a column specification. And I'm going to make this a primary key, and then Y will be a data type of varchar2 with 30 characters. All right. So I created that table, which is, you know, kind of awesome. Uh, now what I want to do is, uh, now what I want to do is uh, I want to show you, I want to show you, I'm going to do select object name, object type, from user objects, right? Well, maybe I should uh, format that the right way. Uh, I'm going to do column. Oops, I'm going to do column. Give me a second while I straighten this out. I'm going to do column, object name, format A10, column. I'm just formatting the column so that it displays properly when I am listing it. Because I want to show you, uh, I want to show you what this column looks like. And I'm going to do object type, format A10. And then I'm going to do select object name, object type, from user, objects, objects, okay. And I have, as you can see, a lot of user objects, right? In my particular instance, they're actually going on and on for a long time. I want to describe my user object, my table object that I want, I'm going to do uh, column, object name, format A10, column, object type, format A10, A, A is alpha, and I'm going to narrow this thing down. I'm going to do object name, object type from user objects, where object name equals T where object there you go so there's my object type T okay. now user objects inside of Oracle is a data dictionary table it stores um, all of the objects that were created by the user. In this case, the user is sys. Let me add data into my table. I'm going to do describe right here. I'm going to do describe T. And notice right here, my X column is defined as number 38. I, def I describe this as a integer data type. That's a generated column. And Y is a varchar 230. And I'm going to do insert into uh, T, and I'm going to insert, and I'm going to insert uh, Y, which is the only column I want to insert. And I'm going to do values, and I'm just going to say just Y. All right. I'm going to do select star from T. Look, it created one. I didn't have to specify one. That's the generated column. 
let me enter another one and just why again okay, create a two so this is the identity column that exists uh, this is the identity column that exists inside of uh, uh, Oracle 12c that wasn't there before okay. let me show you something else let me do a drop table T and I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do uh, create table T and I'm gonna uh, say as select star from all objects all right so it's gonna create the table with some data in it um, already okay. here's the new feature inside of uh, Oracle 12c I can say show space T and it will show me of course um, come on I don't have that defined ah. let me show you something else hold on I'm gonna do set timing on set timing on is a new feature in 12c I'm gonna do alter table T and I'm gonna do add data character 2000 default value is going to be X look this right here when you set timing on it will tell you how long it took to do something okay. everything you do it will tell you how long it took to do something okay what I did here is I altered the table called T I added a column called data and the data column that I added had the data type of char 2000 characters with a default value of X so altering the table in this instance took 32 milliseconds all right another feature inside of um, another feature inside of uh, Oracle 12c is this set timing on so I just turned timing off and I'm going to do drop table T and that column is called is an invisible column all right let me create I'm going to do create table T and I'm going to do uh, employee number emp number and that's going to be a number of number data type like that and I'm going to do employee name right and employee name and I'm going to make this thing uh, Vartar 2 20 characters and then I'm going to do salary and I'm going to I want the salary to be invisible because I don't want that to be displayed okay so here's what I did I created an emp number of number data type with six digits e name employee name which is varchar2 variable length character with 20 characters and then I created salary with the data type of number nine digits and this is going to be an invisible column so watch what happens I'm gonna do insert into T and I'm gonna do values 5 John 2200 okay. Emp number e name Sal okay and I'm gonna do select star from T look since I made this column invisible salary column invisible I do a select star from T which is my table I cannot see the salary column this is also a new feature uh, inside of Oracle and I can very easily change my table I'm going to to make that column visible again the reason this said too many values is because I was trying to insert into the salary column but I have defined it as being invisible and since it's invisible I have to explicitly say that I want to add to it or I have to explicitly say that I want to display it 
watch. I'm going to do select. Amp no ename sal from t. Okay. Now that I said I want to list it intentionally, now I can see the value. When I set select star from, it won't appear. If I want to change it from invisible to visible again, all I have to do is this. I have to do alter table. Uh, I have to do alter table t. Modify sal visible. Just like that. And then when I do select star from t, there is the salary column that is visible. Okay? So this whole thing of visible columns. This is also new to 12C. Let me show you something else. I can create multiple indexes on the same column. Okay? This is not something you were able to do before. For example, I can say uh, create index m index 1 on t amp number e name okay so it created an index called amp ind1 on the t table on columns amp no and e name then i can do this i can create a let's say a bitmap index amp ind2 on t and I can do amp number and then e name and I can make this index invisible woohoo also something new in 12c that didn't exist before this whole thing of creating invisible indexes creating multiple indexes on the same columns all right so that is also uh, new uh, inside of uh, inside of Oracle 12C. What else I want to show you right now that is kind of slick? Lots of great things actually. I can create multiple partitions associated with the associated with my table. Let me do drop table T. Okay. And let me describe what partitions are. Okay. Sometimes the data is so large, okay. sometimes the data is so large that internally within the database structure, you want to create partitions. You can create a partition on a column. Let's say you want to create a partition um, on salary. And you want to say everybody who makes ten less than ten thousand dollars be in one partition. Everybody that makes less than twenty thousand be in another partition. Everybody that makes less than thirty thousand be in a third partition. From the perspective of the user, they don't know any different. But internally, in the database engine, it gives me great flexibility to manage my space. Okay? Gives me great flexibility to manage my space. So let me show you how these partitions are created. Okay? So you can have multiple new partitions associated within the same uh, table structure. So I'm going to do create table. I'm going to call this thing mpart and I'm going to say employee number is number 8. Employee name is varchar2 40 characters. And salary is going to be a number six, all right. And then I'm going to say, uh, then I'm going to say, I want to create a partition by range of salary, and I want to create a partition, partition called partition one or P one, and the values in partition one are going to be those that are less than ten thousand dollars. Just ten thousand, okay. And I'm going to create another partition, partition two, with values that are less than twenty thousand. And I'm going to create another partition, partition three or P three, 
with uh, values that are less than 30,000. Okay. There you go. It created the table. Very, very slick. Now, from the perspective of the user, when I do insert into uh, M part and I do values, 1, John, and I do 10, and I do 12, like that. Okay, what that does, since this is above 10, but less than 20,000, it will put this, this, this entire row will be inside of this partition, which is very, very slick. Okay, the reason for that is because internally, the data can be managed. This table, this table, if it was a large table, and that's when you would create partitions, this table wouldn't eat up all of the space in one place. It would be partitioned out internally. And to add partitions is very easy as well. You can just say, alter table, emp part, like so, and I can say add partition, and I can say partition, add partition, say partition P4, values less than 35,000. Okay. Partition P5, values less than 40,000. Just like that. Of course, it would help if I did this the right way. Add partition. Alter table and part. Add partition. Yeah, I'm doing this right. Uh, anyway, you can alter partitions this way as well. Simply add and remove partitions uh, as you see fit. Remember, this would be a internal enhancement. All right. I can also do this. I can say alter table, alter table emp part, and I can say drop partitions p3, p2, and p3. Just like that. Okay. And that way, it will trash the partitions. Okay. Very, very slick. Um, I can also do something else that's, uh, I can also do something else that's interesting. Um, so this is dropping partitions, creating partitions. Let me drop the table. Drop table and part. Trash it all together. Okay. So this whole adding, manipulating, creating partitions is a uh, within the within the structure is new to 12C. You can also do something else. You can split a single partition into multiple new partitions. Let me give you an example of that. I'm going to do create table m part, and I'm going to do m number. That's going to be a number eight. Emp name, varchar two forty. Salary is going to be a number six. Partition by range of salary, as I did before. Create. Oops, I spelled partition wrong. Let me make this a little bit bigger so that you guys can see it better. <clears throat> Come on, bold. There we go. Spell partition wrong. There we go, partition. And I'm going to do uh, by salary, partition, P1, values less than 10,000. Partition P2. Values less than 20,000. Partition P max values less than whatever the max value is. Okay? Whatever the max value is in that column. That's what that means. Max value is in that column that is stored. We'll close that. Yes. And run this. Oops. Yeah, fix this. How many times have you had a quote, semicolon, 
ruin your day. Okay, so what I did here is I created a partition by range of salary, whatever data is in salary. And if salary is going to be less than 10,000, it'll be placed in partition one. If salary will be less than 20,000, it'll be in partition two. And the rest will be in this P max partition. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to split this partition up. Now this is something new inside of 12C. Okay? You can split a single partition into multiple new partitions. Watch this. <laughs> what if it doesn't work? <laughs> I'm going to be hurting. So uh, split partition P max into, okay, so I'm splitting this partition right here. All right. And I'm going to split that up into partition P3, values less than 25,000. Partition P4, values less than 30,000. Partition P max. And ta-da! So there you go. I split up the P max partition. See, it's split partition. This is also new to uh, 12C. I created a partition right here. I defined it. And then later on, I split it up. Again, partitions are an internal thing. They make it possible for Oracle data internally to be split into different pieces for management purposes. Now, here's another slick thing inside of 12C. You can merge multiple partitions into a single partition. So, you know, kind of the opposite of what we did here, right? We split the partition. Pmax. What I want to do is I want to merge partitions. So watch this. I'm going to do alter table and part. Merge partitions P3, P4. Right? Into partition P merge. Maybe I need to spell it right. Merge. There you go. So I took Partitions P3 and P4, and I combine them into one partition. Why would I do that? Well, when I evaluate the data as a DVA, when I evaluate the data and I determine that, you know, there is uh, no need to have P3 and P4, maybe because there aren't that many people with $25,000, $30,000 salaries, um, and I want to merge the data so I can merge the partitions in that manner. All right? So major improvements to um, Oracle querying structure, if you will. So it's really kind of slick. All right. The other thing that I want to show you, the other thing that I want to show you is um, the way you can create, <coughs> excuse me, the way you can create um, table spaces inside of uh, inside of Oracle 12C. Really kind of slick. Um, and if you're familiar with it, it's not really it's not really hard to see how this works. I can't believe I've been yapping for 15 minutes. Uh, let me take a break for a couple of minutes, all right? Let me take a break for a couple of minutes and uh, I want to give you guys a chance uh, I want to give you guys a chance to ask me a question. I got so involved in what I was doing <laughs> that I uh, forgot to pause. So I'm going to pause for a little bit. Uh, do you guys have any questions that I can help answer? Oh, I'm okay. let's see. Only the break side. Yeah, hold on. There you go. You should be able to see everything, right? Yep. So I <coughs> created this function right here, and I called the function camel case. All right? And uh, camel case function is going to take the data that's coming in, 
and it will run the init cap function against it. Init cap function will capitalize, well, the first character after every space. So here, if I do emp name, is that what I called it? From T. I think I called it ename. I'm forgetting already. And then I do that. Look at that. Okay. It capitalized the R and the W and the A and the J and so on. I created the function right here. Now this is something new to 12C. Using the with clause to create a function right here <coughs> and then use it immediately. All right? So that's something new to uh, 12C. Let's see. What else? Uh, ooh, let me show you something else that is new to 12C. If I do select star from emp, from t, which is my uh, table, and I'm going to do order by, order by ename, <clears throat> and then I can do this. I can say fetch first two rows only. Look, this is new. This is new inside of um, inside of Oracle 12C. Specifying the how many rows you want back right there. All right? Very, very, uh, very, very slick. Let's see. What else can I show you? Um, that I think will be easy for you to um, understand. Ah, I do this. Alter table, T, add sal number six. And then I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do update T set sal equal uh, five thousand where um, e name equals Adam Johnson do 6,000 where e name equals Matt Turner do 7,000 <coughs> where e name equals me select star from T and I'm gonna do 8,000 where ename equals Jane Smith okay watch what I do now so I've got these salaries right here right let's say I want to um, I want to automatically add a value to salary. I want to create a function that will add a value to salary based on what the salary number is. Okay, So let me show you what I can do here. I can say with create a function right here and I'm going to call the function inc and I say value is going to be a number and I'm going to say the return value will also be a number and the function is going to be I'm going to say if the value that's passed in is less than 7,000 <coughs> less than equal to 7,000 and I can say then I can say return increment value plus 100 just like that this is recursive okay and I can say else I want to return value plus 100 okay. so this will recursively, it's going to, the function will call itself, right? And close out of that, and do end if, and do end, select ink sal from m, nope, from t, look. 
just recursively did it. Numbers are a little bit off. But any value that was less than or equal to 7,000, I recursively added. Really kind of slick. Really, really kind of uh, slick feature. Right? So this whole thing of adding, of having a, um, a, 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 a function uh, is very new to 12C. Right. See. Um, the next thing that I want to show you is is regarding SQL loader. Inside of uh, inside of uh, Oracle uh, 12C. Now SQL loader has been around for quite some time. It uh, gives Oracle the ability to load data from a text file into a table structure. Uh, SQL Loader has had some improvements inside of 12C, some major improvements inside of 12C. But I want to show you how SQL Loader works. Now, the first thing I want to do is uh, first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a user. I'm going to show you how a user is created inside of Oracle. So I'm going to do create user uh, Rafiq identified by that's password. All right. Um, come on. Create user Rafiq. Yeah. Come on. Um, let me do this. I'm going to create a table space. I'm going to do uh, create table space. Create table space my data and data file is going to be in the D not D C let me see where I've got the directory here. Okay, C data um, my data O one dot DBF size 10 meg okay so this created my own table space called my data where I can create and store my own <coughs> uh, where I can create and store um, my own uh, tables and my own structures All right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do create user Rafiq identified by password one default table space my data come on ah uh. Just a second. on that. I'm going to do this. 
I'm going to do create table. I'm going to do create table actors. And I'm going to do a name bar char 220. A, I'm going to do a zip bar char 210. Right. And I'm going to create this table. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I can bring data in using SQL Loader. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do Notepad Actors TXT. And I'm going to do um, Tom Cruise 90210. Uh, Ava Mendez uh, 60611. Um, Alan Rickman 33606 and save this. So I've got this actors txt file with this data in it. Now what I can do is I can create what is known as a SQL loader control file. And I can do this this way. I do notepad actors ctl and I'm going to say load data in file actors txt into table actors fields terminated by and a name a zip save this so my table name that I'm importing it into is called actors all right let's take a look at that control file type actor CTL. So this control file will be used by SQL Loader to bring this data in and it's going to bring it into the actors table and a name and a zip are the two columns that I have. See it? A name and a zip. And those are the two columns that I have with data that is delimited by a comma which is right there. Okay. Now all I have to do is uh, now all I have to do is bring the data in. All right. <clears throat> so if I type SQL LDR, SQL LDR, notice it gives me a bunch of options. I can type SQL LDR, sys. Um, do sys password control actor CTL and sys uh, okay so I've got uh, control Oh, come on. Control. Is in data. Come on. Ah, this is annoying. Um, this would actually bring data in. I'm not really sure what's going on, but as many times as I've used this, it's interesting how, let me um, do this here. Um, SQL plus system. Create table actors. Oops. Create table actors. A name varchar two twenty. A zip 
bar char 2, 10. There we go. No. Go back here. Notepad, actor, CTL. Yep. And SQL loader. And I'm going to make this system. Look at that. Okay. So here's what happened. It's using the system user ID with this password because that's a system password. It's using this control file to read in the control file. It's using this control command to read in this control file. It took three rows, okay, and it loaded three rows into the actors table, right? So let's take a look if that actually worked. I'm going to do SQL plus system. There you go, and I'm going to do select star from actors. There's the data, right? So if I go to... Um, if I go to my actors, there's a data that was that was brought in right there. Right? Tom Cruise, Eva Mendez, Alan Rickman. So that's what SQL loader does. Now SQL loader is a very uh, awesome thing because the control file can be used uh, in uh, many different ways. Here's what I can do. Let me show you. I can do Notepad Actors to CTL. And here I'm going to do load data, load data in file asterisk into table actors, right? Fields terminated by comma. A name and a zip are the columns. And I can put the data right here. I can say begin data. And I can say, I can say, uh, Sean Connery, 90210, right? Bruce Willis, and you know, 12001, right? Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. I don't know, 22010, whatever. And I can save this file, and I can exit. Right? And now I can just do this. I can go back to SQL Loader, and I can say SQL Loader, System, specify my password, and I can say my control file is going to be actors to ctl And I can press Enter, and... Oh, uh, truncate table actors. Let's go back to it. It's just saying that the table has to be empty for an insert operation. There you go. Three rows successfully loaded. And the three rows that it loaded this time was from the actors to CTL. If I look at the, if I type actors to CTL, here are my three rows. Yeah. And inside of my um, structure here, if I do select star from actors, there's Sean Connery, Bruce Willis, and Gwyneth Paltrow. Right. A way, uh, one more way to uh, bring data in. Right. Um, very, very slick. Um, so, I can also bring in data that is a fixed position. I can bring in data that is delimited by like a comma, of course, or a pipe or something. Yeah. So, I can use any number of things to determine how my data is de delimited. <coughs> Thanks, Flora. Password was misspelled. All right. Let me show you. 
<clears throat> a few other things here inside of my Oracle environment the enterprise manager the graphical interface that was loaded HTTPS localhost 5500 EM give me a second there this is the web-based uh, enterprise manager within Oracle this is what gets installed as a result of installing Oracle by default yeah I see it anyway don't care about the SSL error and 5500 is a default port where it installs uh, the web-based enterprise manager here it is trying to get in this is where I got stuck last time with uh, flash player not being installed <coughs> there you go so now I'm able to get in I'm gonna do as sysdba and I'm gonna get in sys put in the password like that and I'm logging in now uh, Windows users uh, not Windows users uh, SQL Server administrators are probably gonna be more comfortable with the enterprise manager interface <clears throat> than the command line interface right. so this is uh, showing me as you can see the dashboard it's listing everything waiting for it to load and wait for it to complete loading we lost a bunch of people <laughs> only the interested people are still here which is good people have a lot to do Saturday morning obviously uh, some of the guys are here from the East Coast so here's a configuration this is my virtual machine not having enough resources to show everything or to move fast enough that's why it's taking a while um, but enterprise manager tells me that I've got my ORCL instance I have configuration that I can manipulate right here initialization parameters and such database properties I can click on storage click on security here I can click on users right there here's gonna show me users that are on the system right now <clears throat> Come on, users. So it doesn't move this slow in the production environment, right? This is moving slow because um, I have my virtual machine and I haven't allocated it sufficient resources. And by the way, <clears throat> this is one more reason that most uh, uh, Oracle admins like to use the command line to do everything because they don't want to wait for the interface. So here's the create user and you can just click it it gives you a it gives you a nice interface allowing you to create a user <clears throat> right <clears throat> actions you can perform on specific users and such right security performance right there's also SQL tuning advisor that will tell you uh, things associated with your SQL statements but this is the very quick view of the enterprise manager interface in uh, 12c All right. now you can download enterprise manager I'm sorry you can download Oracle uh, you can download Oracle 12c just by going on um, Oracle's uh, website or you can just Google download Oracle 12c and it will bring you right to the page where you can download 12c you can uh, all you have to do is provide free registration information
you can register with uh, you can register with Oracle for free. Download the enterprise version of the Oracle database engine for free, and you can use it really as much as you want. And it's available on the for the Linux platform, for the Windows platform. And you can install it just like I did. You can install Oracle VirtualBox. You can install Windows Server 2012. And you can um, uh, use it just like I did to get your feet wet. Uh, I tried to show you some of the new features of 12C. There are over 500 new features associated with 12C. Uh, I showed you just some of them that have gotten me excited. Uh, there are many of them, actually, um, that features that didn't exist in the past. Hopefully, you got a little bit of a handle on uh, 12C. And if you've been working with Oracle in the past, if you've worked with Oracle in the past, uh, you'll get to recognize, you'll recognize the features that are available here at 12C. A little bit about me, for those of you that haven't been here before, my name is Rafiq Wayani. I've been around in technology for nearly three decades. There's my email address right there, rwayani at itexpertwebinars.com. Do me a favor, and uh, once this webinar ends, complete a very, very short five-question survey to let me know how I did. And uh, if there are other webinars that you would like to see coming uh, that uh, pertain to you, let me know. I, on uh, February 13th, I have a webinar on C Sharp and uh, C Sharp development using SQL Server 2014. I will invite you to that <clears throat> so you can uh, register for that if you like. Uh, February 13th is a Thursday, and the webinar is going to take place in, in the evening at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to attend. Feel free to forward the email to uh, anybody you like. I'm really glad you were here today. Hope to see you here again another time.